Hello, everybody, and welcome to another presentation by me or us. Uh, so my name is Dr. Micah Yu, and usually see my partner, Dr. Melissa Mandala, but she's not available today, so I'll be the one presenting. And so I'm going to get started here and show my PowerPoint. Once I can find the presentation button, and here we go. So today's presentation is going to be on chronic fatigue. This is a highly demanded topic. It's one that conventional medicine isn't very good at. And it's one that a lot of people are suffering in this world and in the USA with chronic fatigue and one that I see in my clinic as well. So once again, I'm Dr. Micah Yu and I work at the Dr. Lifestyle Private Practice uh, where I'm self-employed and my brand is, and my handle on social media is my Anime MD, which you see on the bottom right of the screen here. Oh, let me put this on presentation mode actually. Okay, so about me, I am board certified in internal medicine, rheumatology and lifestyle medicine. I am fellowship trained in integrated medicine as well at the University of Arizona where I learn about mind-body medicine, supplements and herbs. I'm also certified in functional medicine as well through the Institute of Functional Medicine. So if you want to see me or my wife, Dr. Melissa Mandala, at our private practice in California, you can go to drlifestyle.org. I am uh, licensed in about 15 states in the USA. So I can see a lot of patients virtually or in my clinic. And we focus on integrated and functional medicine. And we try to prevent and reverse chronic diseases. So we do see a lot of chronic fatigue as well. And you can find me at my Anime MD on social media. Well, first of all, what is chronic fatigue? Chronic fatigue is a condition that is characterized by extreme fatigue. Some patients can't even get out of bed. Some patients have trouble doing their chores. There's a spectrum of patients with chronic fatigue and chronic fatigue is also known by another name it's also known as myalgic encephalomyelitis i know it is a very long name but that is a scientific term for that it usually happens more in female and there is some evidence that there's some genetic component to this okay so if you have a family member that has chronic fatigue syndrome you're more likely to get it. And as you can see here, there are so many symptoms um, that can be associated with chronic fatigue. So chronic fatigue itself is just fatigue, but there are many chronic conditions that have different symptoms that can be associated with fatigue. And we're gonna get into that. So chronic fatigue syndrome can have various symptoms. You can have brain fog, memory loss, some joint aches, muscle aches, fatigue, and sometimes you're not even able to exercise or you get very tired easily just from thinking about certain things. And if you overexert yourself, you can get even worse. So for some patients, um, just going up a hill can be overexerting or do much to, doing too many chores can be overexertional and that can make the fatigue even worse. And right now we don't have a great understanding of all the details of chronic fatigue syndrome, but we're starting to slowly understand it better and better. And there are similarities with chronic fatigue syndrome with other medical illnesses. And we're gonna dive into those different medical illnesses just a bit. So before we diagnose chronic fatigue syndrome, we have to make sure there's no other diseases or syndromes or problems that can be causing and driving fatigue. Sleep disorders are number one. When I see a patient that's fatigued, I think about sleep. My question for the patient is, are you having insomnia? Insomnia can be characterized by having trouble going to sleep, not staying asleep or waking up way too early. And I also inquire about snoring as well. Do you have 
snoring that could be leading to sleep apnea or obstructive sleep apnea because that can give you fatigue in patients with obstructive sleep apnea you wake up very very tired you can have central sleep apnea which is um, a disorder in the brain that causes uh, sleeping disorder or you can have obstructive sleep apnea where you have a structural issue um, that is causing um, lapses in breathing when you sleep which causes snoring and you have restless leg syndrome. These, all these factors in sleep can lead to more fatigue and you need a sleep test to rule that out. Number two, do you have any hormonal imbalances? Disorders like hypothyroidism, hyperthyroidism, or even adrenal issues can lead to fatigue and must be ruled out because if your thyroid is not balanced it can lead to more issues than just fatigue it can lead to hair loss joint pain um rashes um feeling cold feeling hot so that needs to be ruled out as well and if you have adrenal insufficiency that that can be an autoimmune disorder that can be addison's disease so that will lead to low cortisol and then lead to very chronic fatigue as well. So we need to roll that out. My favorite, my topic, autoimmune diseases, that definitely has to be ruled out. Lupus, multiple sclerosis, rheumatoid arthritis, vasculitis, psoriatic arthritis, all these different autoimmune diseases are diseases of inflammation. That inflammation from the body goes to the brain and that inflammation in the brain can cause fatigue. So you got to make sure that you don't have these different autoimmune diseases. And we'll dive into that a little bit more in the next couple of slides. Infections, infections, infections. We need to make sure we rule out chronic infections and acute infections as well. Mono is triggered by the Epstein-Barr virus. We need to make sure that um, the patient doesn't have mono because mono can cause severe fatigue. Um, kids can get it, teenagers, adults can get it to the point where you can't even get out of bed. Unfortunately, we don't have any great conventional treatment, but in the integrated and functional medicine world, we do have some treatments for that. Lyme disease can be controversial. So of course we can have acute Lyme disease. I think everyone can agree on that. But when it comes to chronic Lyme disease, that is a more of a controversial diagnosis that um, it's more supported by the integrative world, which I believe in. And there's also post-Lyme syndrome, which is more of the conventional world. And hepatitis, if it's not controlled, it can also lead to fatigue as well. Mental health disorders can not be um, understated. So depression, anxiety, bipolar disorder, if you have a mental disorder, mental health disorder with depression, anxiety, um, this can lead to mental exhaustion. It can lead to more fatigue. So please see a psychologist, psychiatrist, see a primary care doctor first. Have them roll it out. And if they say that you do have it and they can't help you that much, then go to a psychiatrist, go to integrated medicine, go to functional medicine. There are ways to help this. Acupuncture can help this too chronic pain conditions, fibromyalgia, and chronic migraines can cause fatigue. Because you can't sleep because of these disorders. You have chronic pain that can lead to more fatigue. So that needs to be ruled out. Nutritional deficiency, big one here. You can have iron deficiency, B vitamin deficiency, vitamin D. I recently had a patient with um, very low vitamin D. Her fatigue went back, um, got better after the vitamin D got replenished went from like 11 to back to 50. So that needs to be checked, definitely. Okay, if your primary care doctor isn't checking it, you need to ask to get checked. And any heart and lung diseases, definitely need to be checked as well. If your heart's not pumping enough blood to the rest of the body, you're gonna get very tired. Symptoms. Uh, so symptoms can be from, uh, can be extreme exhaustion. It, is not relieved by rest or sleep. You can have generalized muscle aches and joint pains, you can have headaches from the fatigue. 
brain fog, you can have sore throat sometimes, you can feel unreplenished after sleeping. Uh, we talk about depression already, but you can be very irritable, have a lot of mood swings when you have fatigue. I know when I'm tired, I definitely have a lot of mood swings. Uh, I'm very irritated as well. So you just don't want people to be around you. You want to be alone sometimes. You can be very sensitive to light and noise and other stimuli and some certain smells when you're tired. More, um, more irritated by these uh, sensory stimuli. You can, when you have fatigue, it can lead to more digestion issues. So more fatigue, it can lead to a host of other problems. Um, it can lead to gut microbiota issues, at least to IBS and other digestive problems. It's just a cascade going down. Your immune, sorry, I'm going to turn off uh, my phone real quick. It's, I hear some noises. And your immune system can also be low when you have fatigue. It doesn't function as well. And of course, we talk about post-exertional malaise. So when you try to do certain physical activities and mental activities, you can feel you're more tired. Can you have chronic fatigue with other diseases? I think we mentioned that in two slides ago, but I'm gonna talk about some of these diseases, okay? So you can have fatigue with other diseases. So fibromyalgia, um, it's not known exactly as an autoimmune disease at this time, but I think in the future it will be. And fibromyalgia is known by widespread pain and fatigue and tenderness in different joints and muscles. There's no visible inflammation of the joints. There's no swelling, but certainly there is pain everywhere. And there are ways to help with fibromyalgia. Um, Low-dose naltrexone is a great medication for it. There are other doctors that can use Cymbalta. They can use um, uh, Lyrica. There are other medications available. Gabapentin as well. Low-dose naltrexone, I like it a lot for chronic fatigue. And you have fibromyalgia as well. Multiple sclerosis is an autoimmune disease of the nervous system. It can lead to a lot of sensory attacks of the limbs. It can lead to weakening of the limbs due to the nervous system issues. So that's one that goes to neurology, but I do see patients sometimes with multiple sclerosis that want me to treat them with um, integrative and functional medicine. And Lyme disease, another one. Oh my gosh, these patients get so tired all the time. And these patients have joint aches. They're so tired, they have so much brain fog. And the chronic Lyme patients, it's sometimes very hard to treat. And these patients are always at the mercy of um, their fatigue. So that one is another one to look out for. Rheumatoid arthritis, a lot of, we talked about it on uh, Jeff AJ's show already with a joint swelling, joint aches. Um, and my patients have fatigue with rheumatoid arthritis. As well, these patients, not only do you have joint aches, you're, but you're so tired from lack of sleep. With all these diseases we're talking about here, patients have a lack of sleep, have insomnia, have trouble sleeping, falling asleep, staying asleep, or waking up too early. And the cortisol is just all out of whack. Lupus, a big one. Um, multiple organs are being attacked all the time. Joints, kidneys, heart, lungs, brain. It's an invisible illness, okay? So lupus patients, we need to be very careful. And fatigue is something that I see a lot in my lupus patients. It's just so tired from all their joints, all their uh, different organs being attacked. And there's brain inflammation in all these patients. Thyroid disorders, we mentioned that already. But hypothyroidism, you can have, um, feel cold, you have uh, skin, you can feel different, hair loss, sluggish, tired. You can have um, sleep issues. You can have um, weight gain as well. And hyperthyroidism is the opposite. Patients um, are hyperreactive. They feel hot. They have weight loss. They have increased appetite. Um, so these patients uh, have the opposite effect. And so you gotta make sure that TSH, free T4, free T3 are all balanced to uh, make sure that the patient doesn't have fatigue from thyroid issues. Depression, anxiety, Dr. Melissa Mandala in my clinic, my wife, um, she does psychiatry, psychology, and family medicine. And we see a lot of depression, anxiety patients, and these patients also have fatigue as well. They're just so tired from their um, mental health. So how do you treat chronic fatigue? Well, um, you can make um, 
you can do cognitive behavioral therapy to manage stress and developing coping strategies. That's number one. Number two, you can avoid exertion and um, post-exertional malaise by understanding what your threshold is for working out, exercising, or just doing chores at home. You should gradually do physical activity. Don't go running a mile when you can't even do go down the street. Okay, you gotta understand where you are and get the mitochondria gradually getting stronger. Medications um, can be prescribed um, to help manage your sleep issues, um, your pain disorders, to try to, if once you get your sleep better, you can possibly have less fatigue over time. Dietary adjustments, we're gonna talk about that more later on, but definitely avoiding certain um, sugars, caffeines, and following certain food protocols. Stress management is really important. Mental health, mind, body, medicine. So deep breathing. So uh, breathing in a box, that's what I like to talk about. Breathing in for four seconds, holding that breath for four seconds, and breathing out for four seconds. That's really important. That can work on your vagus nerve, meditation, yoga, mindfulness, um, engaging in support groups, and just talking to people that understand what you're going through because your family's not gonna understand. Sometimes it's very hard to communicate with family and friends what you're going through. And also um, going to finding other ways to help like acupuncture, Ayurveda, Reiki, some of these things can help. Supplements, big one. I love supplements in my office. I think it really helps. Coenzyme Q10 is a great support for the mitochondria. It can help with um, Chronic fatigue, I really like it a lot. Omega-3 fatty acids is found in different foods and supplements, um, and it can help as well. So certain supplements can be from algae oil, if you're a vegetarian vegan. Uh, fish oil also has omega-3 fatty acids as well. B vitamins, very important. Some patients, they have MTHFR gene mutation. Sometimes they need methylated B vitamins. Magnesium is a big one. Most of our processes in the body need magnesium, your mitochondria needs magnesium, your, your cofactors that need magnesium as well. D-ribose is a big one as well. L-carnitine, um, it's a, so from proteins, um, it's needed for energy metabolism. So if you're low on that, it can help. Uh, rhodiola, rosea, ashwagandha, they are adaptogens, and we'll talk about more about that. And that can help with stress level, help with cortisol regulation. And ginseng is also very important, another adaptogen as well. So these are the different adaptogens here. So rhodiola, rosea, ashwagandha, um, I like these a lot. Um, these can help when you're stressed. So some of the patients are stressed and they have fatigue. So these also help with, um, with your cortisol production and it can help regulate that as well. So sometimes patients have a death in the family or they're going through a divorce or some stressful event, this can help. Certain uh, um, adaptogens can help when you have stress from work or having a difficult time. So some students are very stressed also, and adaptogens can help. Ginseng, another one, there's Asian ginseng, there's American ginseng as well, there's many different Korean ginseng. Um, so that's another adaptogen. Licorice root, um, licorice root can support the adrenals, it can help um, regulate the cortisol, um, even extend the half-life of cortisol, prevent the breakdown of it, so patients have more cortisol in the body for a longer time. Echinacea can also support the immune system. Of course, you want to be careful of that when you have autoimmune disease, but it can help as well. Astralagus, another herb uh, in Chinese medicine that can help. Holy basil, another adaptogen that I really like. So, and Siberian ginseng as well. I mentioned that we have so many different ginsengs, Korean, Asian, uh, American ginseng. So uh, usually when you buy these supplements, sometimes you can get four or five different adaptogens in one supplement, and that's okay. Sometimes you want multiple ones to hit the body. And if you follow me on social media, I, would, I talk about adaptogens. Follow me on YouTube as well, because um, I talk about all these different supplements or herbs. Are there any exercises that can help with chronic fatigue? Yes, there are uh, low impact aerobic exercises. So um, walking, swimming, cycling, that can help. And of course, um, do it up to your threshold. Um, resistance training as well, doing light weights, 
build out the mitochondria. That's the most important. Mitochondria is where your ATP is made in the cell. So you want to get that stronger and stronger. Stretching and flexibility exercises, very, very important. Tai Chi, I love Tai Chi. Tai Chi is so low impact and it can it's actually very hard because you are working your core you're burning but you're also working on martial arts so you're learning how to defend yourself and fight but very slowly you don't actually realize you're actually learning how to fight but it's a form of martial arts yoga can be helpful as well pacing instead of pushing through your fatigue understand your body okay break your activities into different periods so you can regulate your threshold in mind-body medicine, we mentioned that earlier, there are vagus nerve stimulator devices that can help stimulate the vagus nerve, but these are natural ways of with meditation, deep breathing, and mindfulness um, exercises. I mentioned the vagus nerve already. So the vagus nerve is cranial nerve 10, and it is found um, in the brain, it's on the neck, and it's the longest nerve in the body. Because next year, um, gut, nerve, and brain axis. So this one, when you stimulate it, it's parasympathetic. So you have a parasympathetic and sympathetic nervous system. Chronic fatigue patients and other autoimmune disease patients have a sympathetic overdrive. So you're always in fight or flight mode. So you want to say, uh, you want to stimulate your parasympathetic nervous system so you can increase your heart rate variability. And that will lead to an anti-inflammatory response and can help with chronic fatigue. So that's just one avenue of helping your body. And we mentioned a little bit about mind-body medicine already. So here are the different techniques in a big summary. So meditation, we mentioned that. There are so many ways to meditate. Relaxation techniques, we talked about that. CBT, that you work on that with a therapist, kind of behavioral therapy. Yoga and Tai Chi, we mentioned that as well. And biofeedback, biofeedback, you can work on that with a therapist also. So these are just examples of mind-body medicine techniques you can help with chronic fatigue. Lifestyle changes. I love lifestyle changes. This is the foundation. Make sure you get enough sleep, uh, adequate sleep, okay? Make sure you get a good sleep hygiene, dark, um, make sure there's no light coming in so you can get your melatonin up. Don't look at the screen. Don't look at um, cell phone, watch TV before you sleep. Don't make sure you don't drink caffeine, smoke, drink alcohol, or eat a big meal. Manage your stress levels. Use mind-body medicine techniques to manage your stress levels. I know sometimes you can't avoid it, but you need to find ways. Get a daily routine. Don't sleep at 1 a.m. all the time. You got to get a such a really good routine. Make, wake up early. Um, don't drink five glasses of cups of uh, coffee every day if you can. Try to have a good routine. Um, exercise every day if you can. Um, have a routine there as well. Eat a balanced diet. We're going to talk about diet in a little bit, but eating whole foods as much as possible. Um, manage your energy levels. Um, so don't go to rock concerts every day. Don't go to raves and stuff. You want to maintain a good energy. And uh, seeking friends, connecting with community is really important. And just managing, tracking your symptoms. So if you do need to see a doctor or if you need to get a second opinion, they see what you've been going through. It's about foods that can help and worsen. So high sugar foods, definitely uh, try to avoid that. It can make you crash. Um, fruits is fine for sugar, but not from these um, uh, like Coca-Cola. You don't want to drink um, these high energy drinks. Uh, aspartame, you want to avoid that. Highly processed foods. Um, you want chips, cookies, cakes, pastries. You want to avoid those foods as well. Caffeine and alcohol, if you can avoid it, try to. Definitely alcohol because it can mess with their sleep-wake cycle. Uh, but caffeine, I mean, sometimes you can drink one or two cups of caffeine. That's fine. Green tea is great. Uh, coffee, you know, if you need a drink, you can drink it. But definitely be careful of that. Don't overdo it. Whole foods is really important. Okay, so you want to eat whole foods. You want to eat um, fruits, vegetables, whole grains. If you want to eat lean proteins, you can. Tofu, edamame, um, legumes is great for protein sources. Healthy fats as well is important. Uh, avocados great for healthy fats nuts and seeds um put that into your meal okay you need the whole package you need to put a mitochondria with protein and fats and carbohydrates as well so stay hydrated if you drink water 64 ounces minimum okay I'll aim for 100 ounces um if you are not drinking water your cells aren't able to work its job 
and complex carbohydrates we mentioned already, whole grains, legumes, starchy vegetables, potatoes, sweet potatoes, purple potatoes, um, quinoa, uh, what else is there? Brown rice, these are excellent. Black beans, white beans, uh, lentils, these are excellent sources of carbohydrates and proteins protein rich sources. So I mentioned tofu and legumes already. So those are excellent sources of protein, omega-3 fatty acids as well. Fish oil, if you need fish oil, but algae oil, if you're vegetarian, vegan, it's great. And it helps with brain mood, um, or brain health, mood regulation, it also helps with um, inflammation as well. And balanced snacks. So um, fruits are excellent. Nuts, seeds, it's excellent. Yogurt, you can drink yogurt. Uh, or not drink, but eat yogurt, eat coconut milk, yogurt or uh, almond yogurt. There's so many different types of yogurt besides cow milk yogurt out there. You get a lot of probiotics with that. So does COVID cause chronic fatigue? So this is a big one. So COVID-19 has wrecked, um, has changed our lives in the past two years. I see a lot of um, chronic fatigue patients in my co post COVID patients, long haul COVID patients. So yes, it does cause it. You can get mast cell issues, POTS as well. We mentioned that in a couple of videos ago. So uh, chronic fatigue is something we can work on with COVID. If you have chronic fatigue with COVID, no one's helping you, come to us in our clinic, we can help you. We do things with integrated functional medicine that can help patients. So conventional medicine doesn't really help with this. You gotta do the convent integrated functional medicine route. And here are my references. Um, I had a slide here that had uh, things about me. So I'll just tell you briefly about me. So um, if you want to see me, go to drlifestyle.org to see us in our private practice where I'm licensed in 15 states in the U.S. and in, you see me in person in Southern California. Follow me on social media on um, TikTok, YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram at my autoimmune MD, where I talk more about this. And um, once again, I do have several certifications. And if, so if you want not just conventional medicine, but you want alternative medicine, I'm here for you. I understand how to balance between the both fields. And thank you so much for being with me today. And um, if you have any questions, uh, definitely send it our way. And we'll try to get back to them as fast as we can. Thank you so much. Thank you for listening to this presentation. Thanks, Chef AJ.